My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to today's reflection on the Word of God. Today's topic is uh, the new wineskin. The new wineskin or prepare the way. We are actually days to Christmas, the birth of the Messiah, and the big question is, where is he going to be born? My name is Stephen Bugua Doidi from the Archdiocese of Mombasa, Kenya. In Mark chapter 2, verses 21 and 22, the Lord Jesus says that no one uses a piece of new cloth to patch up an old coat because the new patch will shrink and tear off some of the old cloth, making an even bigger hole. It is actually absurd to take a new piece of cloth and put it as a part on an old piece, on an old clothing. It will tear it up, as the Lord is saying. Verse 22 says, Nor does anyone pour new wine into used wine skins, because the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins will be ruined. Instead, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skin. New wine must be poured into fresh wine skin. We know that the new wine is the Holy Spirit of God. It is God living in us. And Christmas is here. How well prepared are you for this Christmas? Where will the Messiah be born? Is he going to be born in a manger somewhere at Bethlehem or where? Is a big question today, and that's why we are talking about the new wine skin. Your body and my body is a temple of God, is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He wants to be born in you and in me, in our bodies, his temple. The question is, are you ready? Is the temple ready? Your new wine skin and level of preparedness will depend on whose standard you're operating on. Whose standard are you operating on? By whose standard are you living? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 25, the word of God tells us, for what seems, otherwise it says, what appears to be God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And what seems to be God's weakness is stronger than human strength. What appears to be God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Of course, you know that God is not foolish. God has never been, will never be foolish. But sometimes we look at what he tells us and see as if he made a mistake. We want to correct it. But he's telling us his wisdom and ours is way far away from each other. Like heaven and earth. Like day and night. So number one, we have the wisdom of God. God is all knowledge, he's all wisdom, he's all understanding, and he's all truth. So we have the wisdom of God. And number two, we have the human wisdom. And he's telling us what appears to be his foolish, foolishness is wiser than our wisdom. Our wisdom as human being, that is our standard, is limited to our human intelligence. It's limited to what we see and observe. Is limited to what we are taught, whether right or wrong, will determine the level of our wisdom. Is limited to experiences, good or bad, sweet or bitter. It depends on what you've gone through in life. Is limited to our role models, whether they are morally upright or not, right or wrong, will determine the level of wisdom we have as human beings. All these things will determine. They will make us be wise or not wise by the human standard. By the standard of God, our wisdom is only a dot. We only know so little compared to what God knows. It's just like heavens and the earth, the difference. Like day and night, like I said earlier. And we normally use this dot of knowledge and wisdom and understanding to actually argue with the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-omnipresent God. The God who created the heavens and earth. So we have the, the wisdom of God, that is operating at the standard of God. We have the human wisdom operating at the standard of human beings. And we have the wisdom of the devil, which is basically slyness. Slyness. It's just crafty and sly. Like we are taught in Genesis chapter 3, 
verse 1 and following, the devil was the most cunning, most sly animal among all the animals. And he was able to confuse Eve by his lies. His lies. That is his wisdom. Taking the knowledge of God, trying to twist it around so he can confuse you and confuse me. He even tells Jesus, worship me and I'll give you all these things. How do you give God the things that belong to God? So it is the craftiness of the devil and it's always contrary to the ways of God. So we have the standard of God, the wisdom of God, the human standard, the human wisdom, and the devil's standard, the craftiness of the devil. The three levels basically worked in the case of Peter at one point. Just minutes away. I remember in Matthew 16, verse, verse 15 to 26, uh, Jesus was asking the disciples what people say about him. Who do they say that I am? And later he's asking them, what about you? He asked them, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from any human being, but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. At this point, Peter operated with the standard of God. He was led by the Holy Spirit. When you allow God in you, when the Messiah is born in you, and he rules your life, he raises your life, he directs you, you'll be operating at the standards of heaven. The standard of God. And at this point, Peter operated at that very high standard, being revealed to from heaven the things that are happening here at this point in time. But a few minutes later, Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, uh, the Bible says, And so I tell you, Peter, you are the rock, and on this rock foundation I'll build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. Immediately after saying that Jesus is the Messiah, his soul is a rock. Verse 19 says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven. And what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So he is the rock. He has the keys to heaven. Most powerful. More powerful than any president in this world. Very powerful. Whatever is shut on earth is shut in heaven. No other human being can do that. No president, not even of America, can be able to do that. But immediately after that, we see Peter, because he's the rock, he's the most powerful, a little bit of pride came in. Verse 21 says, from that time on, Jesus began to say plainly to his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem and suffer much from the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. I'll be put to death, but three days later, I'll be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. He has gone to another standard. A few minutes back, he was operating at the standard of God. But now he's rebuking God, Jesus. And he's saying, God forbid it, Lord. He's saying, that must never happen. How does Jesus react? Verse 23. Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Get away from me, Satan. The devil's standard is already in play. In very few minutes. The guy is so crafty and confusing. Get away from me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my way. Because these thoughts of yours do, don't come from God, but from human nature. The human nature has allowed the devil to come in. The human nature operating by the human standard has been manipulated by the devil and now operating at the standard of the devil much lower instead of operating at the same high level of the standard of God. So which standard are you operating in? That will determine how well prepared you are this Christmas. That will determine the kind of preparation that you're going to take. Are you operating at the standard of Satan? Again, it's the will of God. Peter went that low because of being manipulated by the enemy. Pride came in, allowed the devil to enter, and he started operating on a much lower level. But this was a learning curve for him. After that, he became a transformed man, and he did mighty wonders in the kingdom of God. Verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget self, carry his cross, and follow me. If you want to raise your standard, 
to be the new wine skin, to prepare the way for the Messiah to be born in you, you have to deny yourself. I have to deny myself. I have to raise my standard way above the human standard to avoid Satan influencing me to a much lower standard than Satanic standard. Verse 25 says, For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So we need to be careful about conforming to the human standard, about conforming to the human ways, because that could easily make you and me lose our own life, lose our salvation, everything become wasted. And this Christmas will in that case end up being a season come, a season go, period. It will not have any meaning in our lives. It will not have any meaning in our salvation. If we don't trace our standards to the standard of God, Verse 26 says, Will people gain anything if they win the whole world but lose their life? The Lord is asking. Of course not. There is nothing they can give to regain their life. This Christmas, I'm sure many people are going to prepare in different ways. Many people are going to prepare with celebrations. They are going to slaughter many goats and cows. They are going to be feasting and drinking. They are going to be dancing. There will be fireworks. They will attend midnight masses. Some of them drunk in the midnight service. They are going to do all sorts of things. Is this the new wineskin? Is this where the Messiah is to be born? Of course not. That is the human thinking. And many, I'm sure, are prepared to prepare their Christmas this way. We have made it a feasting occasion instead of the Messiah being born. People in nightclubs everywhere. Some are going to have orgies. Some are going to be bribing and be bribed. Some are going to be fornicating and adultery. Some are going to be bewitching others. Some will be grabbing plots. Others will be aborting and murders and all sorts of nasty things. Relegating themselves, lowering themselves to the standard of the devil. Is this really preparing the way? Is this where the Messiah is going to be born? Of course not. The Messiah is not going to be born in that kind of old wine skin. The wine will be poured. The wine skin will burst. Is this really preparing the way for the Messiah? As John the Baptist shouted from the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. The Bible tells us, at that time, John the Baptist came to the desert of Judea and started preaching. Turn away from your sins, he said, because the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins. This is the way of preparing the way. John was the man, verse 3 says, the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, someone is shouting in the desert. Prepare a road for the Lord. Make a, road, a straight path for him to travel. Prepare the way is upping our standard. Preparing the way is moving away from a sinful life. As John the Baptist is telling us. Preparing the way. Preparing the place for the Messiah to be born. Preparing the temple of God. The new wine skin. Making it anew. So that your body and my body can become the temple of God. So he can be born in us and live in us. Have we raised the standard from the time of John the Baptist? Or the standard has remained the same or even gotten worse? Where are we? John went on to say in Luke chapter 3 verse 9 to 16. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at their roots. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown in the fire. The old wine skin. The wine will burst. We will waste a salvation. Jesus dying on the cross will not have any meaning in our lives. Verse 10 says, The people asked him, What are we to do then? He answered, Whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none. And whoever has, has food must share it. Works of mercy. Looking after the poor, people suffering from the COVID repercussions, taking care of the widow, the orphan, the street children. That is one way of making yourself new wine scale, the temple of God, and doing it to the right motive, not to the wrong motive. Verse 12 says, 
some tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, Teacher, what are we to do? Don't collect more than is legal, he told them. Stop stealing government officers, workers and employers. Stop stealing. Stop grabbing at every moment. That's what you're being told. That is how we actually renew the wineskin. That is how we renew our life in Christ. Stop it or the Messiah will not be born in you. Because the temple will not be cleansed. The wine skin will be old, is not yet renewed. So we have to stop these negative habits, these standards of the world and the devil. The devil is confusing us, believing in the, in the wealth of this world instead of the eternal wealth. Verse 14, some soldiers also asked him, what about us? What are we to do? He said to them, don't take money from anyone by force. Or accuse anyone falsely. Be content with their pay. The soldiers are being told. The police are being told. Stop asking for bribes. Stop accusing people falsely. This is not the new wineskin. This is not the temple of God. And on Sunday we are in churches. What do we think that we can cheat God? That we can be sly with God like the devil thinks? We need to be the new wineskin, ready ourselves to be the temple of God so the Messiah can be born in us. That's what the word of God is telling us today. Let this Christmas not be like any other Christmas, not be like any other season of merrymaking and forgetting that Messiah is being born. Where will he be born? Verse 15 says, People's hope began to rise. And they began to wonder whether John perhaps might be the Messiah. So John said to all of them, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who's much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Do you want him? Are you truly a Christian? Have you prepared the way for him? Have you raised your standard into the new wineskin so he can be born in you? So the new wine, the Holy Spirit, can be in you and you can live in him? That is the question. Raising our standards. You know, for a Christian, your standard is not meant to be the same standard as the pagans out there. The Messiah has already delivered you. He has already filled you with his Holy Spirit, the new wine. If you maintain the wine skin, the Holy Spirit will remain. If you make the wine skin old, it will burst. The Holy Spirit is not going to remain in there. Have you raised your standard? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. The Lord is reminding us. No longer then. This is after Jesus has died and resurrected. So I become new creatures. Verse 17 says, whoever is in Christ is a new creature. The old is gone. Verse 16 says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards. What is your standard? You know, the Christian of today likes saying, you know, I normally sin because I'm human. The word of God is telling you, if you are a true Christian, your standard is not the human standard. You have to up your game and go to the standard of God. We no longer judge anyone by the human standard. You are not judging the level of the pagans. You are not judging the level of people who don't know God. Your level, the bar has been raised. It is much higher. Up your game, you Christian. You need to up your game. Remember the ten virgins. Or the ten young women, as some Bible version says. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there were ten young women who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and the other five were wise. Christian, are you among the foolish or the wise? That is the question. Five were foolish, the other five were wise. It will depend with the standard at which you are operating. That will make you wise or foolish. If you are still with the old wine skin, 
your cell, you are among the foolish. But if you have renewed your wine skin, you are a new creature, then you are among the wise. And today, just like yesterday, you have another opportunity, a chance to choose whether you want to belong to the wise or to the foolish. Verse 3 says, The foolish ones took their lambs, but did not take any extra oil with them. The wine skin is still old, it's not being renewed, and it has nothing inside. While the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lambs. The oil is the Holy Spirit of God. The oil is the Messiah being born in you and in me. When it's inside you, you have the oil in you. And your lamp will always be lighting. While the wise ones took container full of oil for their lamp. Verse 5. The bridegroom was late in coming. So the women began to nod and fall asleep. They went to sleep. This can be... People who have Jesus in them, even when you sleep, you still have him. You still have the life. And even when you sleep complete, you die. You die in Christ. There is still hope for you. But the ones who don't have the oil, the Messiah is not going to be born in them. When they sleep, they are sleeping minus the light. They are in darkness totally. And when they, they, they sleep complete, they die, they go to hell. They are not known in the kingdom of God because they have remained stupid even though the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of God has come upon us and it's all in black and white in the word of God. Verse 6 says, it was already midnight when the cry rang out, here is a bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten women woke up and trimmed their lambs. Then the foolish ones say to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. At the appointed time, you will try to look for Christ, you won't find him. This Christmas, he wants to be born in you. Prepare the way. Prepare the wineskin. Renew it. Prepare the temple, he wants to be born in you. No, indeed, the wise ones answer, there is not enough for you and for us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. Go to the shops. It will be too late. My dear brother and sister, that will be too late. When the bridegroom comes and you're not ready with your lamb, with the new wine skin, having wine, the new wine in it, the Holy Spirit, the light of Christ, it will be too late. Verse 10, so the foolish women went off to buy some oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom, the bridegroom arrived. The five who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Time up for renewal. Time up to make the new wineskin. Time up to prepare the temple. The time is now. Later, the other women arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not. I do not know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, be on your guard then, because you do not know the day or the hour. Be on your guard, because you do not know the day or the hour. He will come like a thief. Your lamb. Does it have oil? Do you have enough oil? Where will the Messiah be born? Have you prepared the temple? Have you renewed the wine skin? So that it can be born in you to remove the darkness. To empower you with the oil. The living waters. We need to up our game and prepare. Not in the standard of the devil. Not in the standard of human beings. But in the standard of God. And God has given the direction. We cannot prepare in the normal way and we think we are okay. We are beyond the ordinary human standard. We are beyond the pagan, the Lord is saying. He's saying we are no longer measured by the human standard. The Holy Spirit is there to help us to up our game. We cannot remain in the ordinary human standard. And we say we are okay because everybody is sinning. 
John the Baptist said to prepare the way is to stop sinning because the kingdom of God is at hand. The master will come. The banquet will be on. Do you have oil? Is the Messiah in you? This Christmas, is he going to be born in you? Or your lamp will remain off, dimming, because there is no oil. Allow Jesus to be born in you. And you can only allow him to be born in you by preparing in the godly standard, aided by the Holy Spirit, the new wine. That's the only way you can make your wine skin new. You can make your body the temple of God. What is in your heart? You need to discard it. Is it malice? Is it fornication? Is it adultery? Is it witchcraft? Is it greediness? Is it jealousy? Is it whatever is not of God? You need to remove it this Christmas, preparing the way. You prepare the way by discarding all the negatives so that you can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus and it can be born in you. So a Christ can truly be born in you and in me this Christmas. So that this will not just be a season come, a season go. It's going to be a Christmas with a difference. Don't be like the, the foolish young women. Be wise by the standard of God. Remember we have wisdom by the standard of the devil very low, by the standard of human still low, by the standard of God. At which level are you operating? At which level do you want to operate? If you want to pray by the standard of God, stop listening to human knowledge and wisdom. That is against the will of God. Stop justifying sin. Stop justifying the ways of this world. Prepare the way. The Messiah wants to be born in you, but he cannot force himself in you. You have to allow him. He says, I'm at the door knocking. Whoever hears me and opens the door, I will come in and make a home in that person. He wants to come. Do you want him to come? He cannot come. And you are still preparing by the low standards of the devil and of this human wisdom. You really have to up your game if you want him. If you really want true salvation, you have to up your game. You have to be the new wineskin. Otherwise, we are wasting the salvation. We are wasting the grace of God. So today as we pray, pray for the grace to raise your standard to the new wineskin level. To raise your standard to the godly standard. To cleanse the temple of God, your body and my body. For the Messiah to be born in. For you and I to be true vessels of Christ in this planet earth. So that he's going to bless us here. He's going to heal us here. He's going to prosper us here in him and for him. And eventually we will be with him in heaven forever more. You may close your eyes and talk to the master. Ask him to forgive you for the many times you played the lower league. You cannot win the premier league and they are doing the exercises of league number five. You can never win. You have to change your exercises. You have to up your game. You cannot win a race and you are practicing like you are competing with the tortoise. You can't win the race. For you to win the race, you have to up your game. You need to up your spiritual game. Ask God to forgive you for playing in the lower league, lower spiritual league. He is a very merciful God. Talk to him. Ask, invoke his blood to cleanse you, to cleanse me, to cleanse our families. So every member of our family this Christmas, they can prepare by the standards of God. We should stop conforming because everyone is doing it. My dear listener, my dear viewer, you are not everybody. You are a child of God, created the image of God and for God. Listen to his voice, not the many voices of the world. Raise your standard. Pray for the grace to up your game, your spiritual game, to live in and for Christ. Invite him into your cell. Tell him you are ready for him to be born in you this Christmas and to remain there until we make it to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, trust, and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
If you'd like to continue receiving these weekly presentations, ensure to press on the subscribe button. Thereafter, press on the notification bell so that every time a presentation is uploaded, you get a message on your phone. See you next week. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah.